Hi, welcome to Yoga Today. My name is Nisha Zollinger. Today's class is a very mellow stretching and strengthening class on the floor. We'll be using a chair and a strap, and it's specific for those of us who have perhaps lost some strength and or flexibility due to a variety of possible conditions, such as aging and just getting away from movement, injury, illness. We will be learning some skill sets and practicing some skill sets about how to get down to the floor safely as well as get up from the floor and enjoy a luscious, rounded practice. Okay, so we are going to start standing up and then you can just adjust yourself around your chair or anything stable really, like an end table. And I'm gonna put mine here to the side. And then you stand in front of it and fold forward and bring your hands to the chair or the end table so that you feel stable. Then you bring your right knee and shin down to the floor, then your left. Then shift over to your outer left hip and you're down. Now retrograde that, we're gonna push into the left hand and the right hand to come back up kneeling. Then the right foot comes down again and then the left foot comes up. Push down into both feet and rise up. Other side, bending forward, placing your hands. We're gonna bend into the left knee and place the right shin down. Then the left shin down. Then shift over to right hips and we're good. So let's stay down. We'll practice getting up after we're done. But for now, we're going to stay down, keep the strap handy, and come to lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. Once you get to your back, check in with your breath that you are breathing. And bring your arms to cactus. That's yoga language of the arms looking like a goal post with arms out to the side and elbows bent. Stay with your breath, separate your feet to about mat distance apart, and then allow your knees to fall toward the right as you roll toward the inside edge of your left foot, the outside edge of your right foot, and still breathing, knees come back through center, and then the legs go the other way, inside edge of the right foot, outside edge of the left foot, and coming up. And so we just go back and forth like this with no particular breath rhythm, just feeling yourself as a breather and also feeling yourself as a body. Sometimes when we stop a routine with our body or we've had something that keeps us from being active, we kind of forget and disconnect with our body. So you just get to feel your body right now. This is very non-specific, just feeling how your feet feel shifting from one edge to the soles to the other side, feeling how your hips feel, how your glutes feel, perhaps how your belly feels, shoulders, and breathing. So the next time that you come back from the left, stay there and bring your feet a little closer together. Now bring your arms down to your side and sense your pelvis. So you've got your pelvis, your glutes, your lumbar spine. And for most of us, neutral spine, there'll be a little bit of space between the floor and your back, but we're all a little bit different. So we're going to do a tuck and a tilt. So we're gonna tuck the pelvis under so the tailbone reaches up toward the knees and the navel moves toward the spine and that low back curve flattens out. And then come back to a neutral spine and then we turn the pelvis the other way. It goes into more of a tilt. So there's a bigger back bend, a bigger arch of the back. And then we go back to neutral. And then we'll just do that a few more times, going toward a tuck. So the lower back comes flatter toward the floor and then the pelvis moves. 
moving toward a tilt so that the sits bones arc toward the floor and the low back pulls away from the floor. And the breath is flowing. And just feeling into the movement of your body and welcoming the sensations that are coming your way. Now pick both legs up and you can hold on to the backs of your thighs or the fronts of your knees, really whatever feels most comfortable for you. And now visualize your sacrum that's between your pelvic halves on your back and visualize it as a clock face. And you're just going to go around all the numbers on the clock by gently moving your knees. So you're rolling around, rocking around every single number on the clock as if this bone on the back of the pelvis is a clock face. And then you can go the other direction as you're breathing here. Just allowing yourself to just feel every little surface there. Perhaps you feel all sorts of little muscles releasing and of course, breathing. All right, so now we keep the right shin or back of the thigh in and place the left foot down to the floor. And just feel this for a moment. You can bring your right thigh closer to your chest if that feels like it is a good thing for your body. And so much of the yoga is truly feeling into the truth of your own body. So I'm pretty mellow with cues, right? We're not necessarily drawing the thigh into the chest. Some of you, that's fine. It feels good. And then perhaps you can stretch your left leg long to the floor. And that might be too much too soon as well. So just notice how that is for you. Take another breath here. If your left leg is long on the floor, bend your left knee, place your foot on the floor and then place your right foot on the floor near your left. As you exhale, draw your left leg in. And again, you sense in to your own body. So even though we're turning some part of our senses out, perhaps watching and listening, we're using sense of sight and sound. So we're exterocepting here, but we're truly training our interoception here in our yoga practice, the inner sense of what's happening on the inside. And I think that takes time, right? So for most of us anyway, and especially if there's been some sort of injury or break in movement, if you did so on the first side and it seems appropriate on this side, stretch your right leg long to the ground. So if you've had anything going on in your body where there's been some sort of injury, it takes time for the nervous system to return back into full sensory mode. And then also if you've never done this before, it takes time to develop that sense of inner listening. And if your right leg is long, still breathing, bring your right foot to the floor and then place your right foot next to your left foot. Now open both knees away from the midline. The soles of your feet can come close together or they don't have to be all the way together here. And we're just gonna take a couple of breaths here. Not entirely passive. So as you exhale, if you can, press your feet into one another. And then notice as you press your feet into one another, you might feel your inner thighs a little bit more. And breathing with this. See if you can also locate some tone from your outer knees toward your outer hips. 
So we're going to use this line of tone from the outer knee to the outer hips. So it's a little bit of an outer hip squeeze, a use of those muscles to perhaps open the knees a little bit wider. And breathing here. So we're going to take about three breaths to slowly bring the knees back upward to face the sky. So super slow motion. The feet have to adjust to come from the soles of the feet together to the soles of the feet on the floor. And notice, oftentimes that gets our deep core muscles online and so it feels good in the lower back. So grab your yoga strap or any sort of belt or scarf will work for this. And with your strap or your belt, we're just going to lasso the right foot. So I'm going to lift my foot up and as much as I can, or as much as you can, get the strap across the ball mound of the right foot. And we're going to flex the right foot and the ankle. So there's a crease here and the toes are gently pulling toward the hip. Similarly, in that first one, you can stretch your left leg long to the ground. Breathing. As you exhale, the next time, bend into your right knee. And as you breathe in, stretch your right leg towards straight. If it's too intense to go all the way straight, you don't have to. We're just feeling in. We're going to do that two more times, bending as you exhale. Breathe in, stretch your leg towards straight. Try to keep your upper arms and shoulders heavy on the ground. Breathing in to bend and exhale to straighten. Transfer both sides of the strap into the right hand. Bend your left knee, place your left foot on the floor. Turn your toes of the right foot out and you might feel those outer hip muscles hugging in again. Open your left arm to the left, open your left knee to the left as you open your right leg to the right. And like we just did, we're gonna exhale to bend and breathe in to stretch. And two more times, nice full breathing here. And we do this to create hydration or free up the hydration in the fascia, in the connective tissue. So you can visualize that things getting more slippery and easeful. And then after three times, we're gonna bring the legs back together. From here, left knee bent, foot on the floor, right leg up. You're gonna release the strap, drape the right leg over the left leg so that there's no gap between the legs. The strap can go off to the side for a moment. Bump your hips over to the right, just a couple of inches. So I pressed down into my shoulders and my left foot to bump the hips over to the right. As you exhale, squeeze your legs together and draw your knees toward the left. Reach your right arm out to the right. So we've got the supine twist here. Your knees might go all the way to the floor and that's totally fine, but I would invite you to keep your right shoulder and upper arm down so that it's strengthening to the rotator cuff as well. We also wanna see if we can keep the ribs, the right ribs pretty heavy toward the floor. So there's a little more stabilizing than just a full on floppy stretch. And as you exhale the next time, bring your knees back up to face the sky, push down into your feet, bring your hips back through center, check in with your breath, reach your right leg up and place your right foot down on the floor near your left foot. Go ahead and stretch both legs long to the ground and just let both legs relax for a moment and just see how you feel from right side to left side. Sometimes the right leg feels longer or more grounded. Sometimes the front of the hip feels more free. Usually there's a little bit more comfort that comes from one side to the other side. Bend your knees, place your feet on the floor, and we set up for the second side, the left side up. And so that ability to feel inside, as I mentioned, interoception is the technical word for it. It's not like we just have it. We have to practice it and we can grow that kind of, it's 
an organ sense, like how you feel inside, what's happening inside. The same is true with uh, proprioception, which is locating yourself, your position in space. Okay, so as you exhale, the next time, bend left knee, flexing ankle, and as you breathe in, stretch. And exhale, and stretch. So we have all these ways to sense and feel. And yoga really invites us to open all of our senses to live deeply, so not just our external senses, one more time, but also our internal senses. Transfer both sides of the strap to the left hand. Open the right arm out to the right. Turn your left toes and hip out to the left. Open both legs and breathing here. As you exhale, bend left knee and breathe in to move your leg towards straight. And you might be noticing it takes some strength to be here. This is part of why we're doing it. So we're definitely stretching, but we have to use muscles to stabilize ourselves in this position as well. So after your third time, squeeze your inner thighs together to come back to the middle and then release the strap, drape your left leg over your right leg, push down into your shoulders and upper back and right foot. Squeeze your legs together. Keep breathing. Bump your hips to the left, set them down. Knees squeeze in and draw your knees toward the right. And left shoulder stays down. And so every pose can be done in a lot of different ways. This is probably a stretch for most of us, but we also wanna be working on some muscle tone not only for tone's sake, but also for support's sake. So inner thighs strong, feeling as you squeeze your legs toward one another, it creates more support for the lower back. Outer left hip pulls toward the foot side of your mat. So you've got strong hips here. And the left ribs and left shoulders stay grounding down. Push down to come on up, bring your hips back through center, unravel your legs and take a breath. Roll over to either side, push down into the top hand side and sit up. And then we're gonna roll over to the belly. So as you come over to your belly, you can bring your hands underneath your face so that it feels more comfortable. And then we're just gonna do some pre-alignment before we actually get into the poses themselves. So as you're lying here on your belly, legs reaching straight back, check to make sure that your legs are really reaching straight back. A lot of times we come into this position, the legs will tend to be splayed. So you make sure that they're pretty close together. Now, see if you can tone your belly by drawing your tailbone at the very base of your spine down toward your pubis. You press your pubis down toward the floor and see if you can even get your navel, your belly button to rise up toward the sky and just breathe with that for a moment. So this is very much, uh, we're gonna be doing some spinal extension here, which is strengthening, but also working the core. See if you can maintain tailbone down as you lift the right leg slightly up. As the right leg lifts slightly up, see if you can roll the right inner thigh up and then reach the right leg long and then lower it down and press it down. And then, wow, that leg is truly longer. Notice that. Same thing, other side. Lift the left leg up, breathing. Any particular breath rhythm is fine. Roll left inner thigh up, reach the leg long like you have a friend pulling on that leg and then lower down. Now, bring your arms down along your side. Your head can turn to the right if you like. Press the shoelace side of your foot down. Keep your belly strong. Next breath in, lift head, chest, and shoulders up. So we're sweeping the front part of the shoulder, the round part of the upper arm bone, forward, up, and back, and the belly is still strong and exhale to lower down. You could turn your head to the left. 
So this is work. Your back muscles have to bend your back here. Your core muscles are supporting your back here. It should feel like effort. I don't want it to feel like hurt. So if it hurts in your lower back, hug stronger in your belly. So lift your navel up more and come up less high. So again, breathing in, rise up. Enjoy it if possible. And as you exhale, lower down. Now, see if you can slide your arms forward. So you have cactus arms here facing down. So palms down, elbows out to the side. And then same thing again, root your tail down a lot. Pull your belly in and up, in and up. Keeping that, lift head, chest, shoulders, and arms. So you've got more levers here on your back and your belly. So should be a little more challenging. And exhale to lower down. Reach your arms back again and see if you can lift head, chest, shoulders, arms, and even legs. Now you gotta still squeeze your legs toward the middle here. Breathing in and breathing out. Strong navel to spine. Breathing in, long spine out through the crown of your head and exhale to lower down. Now slide your elbows and forearms all the way forward so that you prop yourself up in the Sphinx pose. So we call this Sphinx pose. And the exact shaping of it really depends a bit on your body. So if this is just like too much of a bend, bring your hands and arms forward more. But you've got the support, these outriggers of your arms if you need them. Or you can come in closer. So the elbows are underneath the shoulders and we're breathing here. So exhale, press the shoelace side of your foot down into the floor. Breathing in, lengthen your spine. Exhale, pull the navel toward the spine, root the tailbone down to the floor. And just play with that for a moment. So this is very much still a core exercise. And see, you know, tailbone isn't a spot in the body that, you know, we tend to spend a lot of time. So just take a moment to feel down to the very, very base of your spine, a tiny little bone down there. And yes, it does move a little bit when you engage certain muscles. So we're seeing if you can locate with your mind's eye, the tailbone and root it down toward pubis. Next exhale, lower down. Feeling your breath. Notice how when you lie down on your belly and you relax your belly and you relax your legs, that when you take a breath in, your lower back, your back waist expands. And help yourself up to Sphinx again. So we all know the riddle of the Sphinx, right? from the Greek myth, the Sphinx that was the guardian of something. And if you couldn't answer her riddle, she killed you. And the riddle of the Sphinx, as we're here breathing, strong tailbone down, chest open, is what creature has four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? Right? There's a little bit more to it than that. The answer is human, man, right? So we crawl when we're babies, we walk on two legs, and then in our older years, we need a cane. But one of the reasons why we're doing this practice is to blow that myth out of the water, all right? So we're being strong in our bodies, making change, doing the things we need to do to transform and not just surrender into the ways that we think we need to be. So as you exhale, the next time, lower down, turn your face to one side, feel the breath flowing into your back waist.
and we have one more. So doing these kind of poses that are belly strengthening, spinal muscle strengthening, and then we're doing this, we call this a back bend, we're bending back. So important for us to maintain strength around this so that we don't just kind of fall forward into a lot of the patterns we see in our aging communities. Like we can change that. So exhale, tailbone down, ground your finger pads down, grab your mat with your hands and pull your hands isometrically back. So they're not gonna move anywhere, but you'll feel the back sides of your arms engaging and a little bit more activity here as you breathe. And as you exhale, come on down. Once again, turn your face to either side and witness the movement of your breath in your back waist. The muscles get to relax between the poses. So now we help ourselves up to the forearms again and bend the knees rocking to one side of your hips. So I kind of coiled in a little bit, then push down into the hands and walk yourself back. And here we are again on uh, whatever outer hip you came up to. From here, we shift over to hands and knees, grab any furniture for support, and we're gonna stand up. So take some breaths, especially if you tend toward lightheadedness or low blood pressure, or you're feeling like, whoa, I'm not quite ready to join the vertical world again. Take some time. And then we're going to choose which foot you wanna step up with. I'm gonna step with my left, pushing down into left foot and hands, feel the stability underneath you, use your muscles, ground into both feet. Be aware of your feet, feel your leg muscles, and with breath flowing, stand up. Take a moment, situate yourself, feeling yourself now oriented in this vertical relationship to gravity with the shoulders over the hips, with the head over the shoulders. Breath is flowing. If you like, you can bring your hands to your heart to honor yourself for showing up for yourself. May you feel more ease in your being. We hope to see you tomorrow and yoga today. Namaste.